But there are some things that matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. Key to take home, every letdown affects the rest of your performance. Every letdown affects the rest. This is part of the education process on personal development. If you don't take the walk around the block, you probably won't do the apple a day. If you don't do the apple a day, you probably won't consist, you know, start building your library. If you don't build your library, you probably won't keep the journal. If you won't take pictures, then you won't do this, you won't do wise things with your money, you won't do wise things with your time, you won't do wise things with your possibilities and relationships. And the first thing you know, six years of that accumulated, and we say you have messed up. So the whole key to reversing that process now is to start picking up these Now here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest of your decisions. Every new one affects the rest. That's why action is so important, the least action, the smallest action. Take it. So when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return from that one action, it'll inspire you to do the next one and the next one and the next one. If you start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to get an apple. You get an apple, it'll inspire you to get a book. You get a book, it'll inspire you to get a journal. You get a journal, it'll inspire you to grow, develop some skills. All disciplines affect you. Every lack affects the rest. Every new affects the rest. The key is to diminish the lack and set up the new. And you've started a whole new life process. Also, one more thought on discipline. Here's the greatest value of discipline. Self-worth, self-esteem. People are teaching self-esteem these days, but they don't connect it to discipline. The least lack of discipline. And it starts to erode our psyche. One of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. The slightest lack of doing your best starts to grow. Instead of doing your best, doing just a little less than your best. Sure enough. You say, well, it's just going to affect my sales. No. It's going to affect your consciousness. It's going to affect your philosophy. Now you've begun in the slightest way to affect your own philosophy. Here's the problem with the least Neglect starts as an infection. And if you don't take care of it, one neglect leads to Worst of all, when the neglect starts, it diminishes our self-worth, our self-confidence, our self-value. You say, well, how can I get back my self-respect? I'm telling you, you don't have to go to 29 classes. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy. Like I should, and I could, and I will. No longer will I let neglect stack up on me so that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to this. Okay. Let's get kids involved in the least of this. One more, and then one more, and then another one, and then another one, and then some more. And the first thing you know, you're starting to weave the tapestry of a disciplined life into which you can pour more wisdom and more attitude and more strong feeling, more faith and more courage. Now you've got something, a vessel in which to put it. And now the equity is starting to flow. And the early return, I'm telling you if you'll start this process, the early return will have you so excited you'll commit yourself to this strategy. You'll never go back. Join a new crowd. I recommended the last time I was here, which is Man of Babylon, and I said I've lectured now to over 3 million people in the last 33 years, and I've recommended this little book to almost all of my saints. Guess how many have actually gone and got this? Answer, very few. My best guess is 10%. Such an easy thing to do. In that last seminar, right, I suggested this little book, number one, is easy to find, number two, it's easy to buy. The most you can pay for it, six, seven, eight dollars. You can borrow that from your kids. And number three, it's easy to read. It's in story form. That's why I use it for teenagers. How to be rich by 40, 35 if you're extra bright much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. But if it's easy to find and easy to buy, and if it's easy to read, why wouldn't everybody go get it? We don't know. What do you know? You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Here's how profound it is. Some do and some don't. Now here's the numbers. About 10% do. 90% don't. Or won't. We don't know this that. And I'm telling you, 10 years from now, those numbers will still be the same. 10% will, 90% won't. The numbers don't change, only the faces change. You're looking at one of the faces. I used to belong to the 90% who couldn't be bothered even if it was easy.